The first term of a geometric series is 14 and the sixth term is 448. The first question, 2.1.1, you're supposed to calculate the value of the constant ratio R. So let's go ahead and dissect our information. The first term, T1, is equal to 14, which is just A. So A is equal to 14. On the other hand, T6 is equal to 448. T6 is AR to the power 5. This is equal to 448. But we have the value of A. A is 14. So we have 14 multiplied by R to the power 5 being equal to 448. Now we need to divide both sides by 14. If we do that, we're going to get R to the power 5 being equal to 32. So R to the power 5 is equal to 2 to the power 5. It should be easy to see now that R is equal to 2. This is our common ratio of our geometry series. Let's go ahead and do 2.1.2. Determine the number of consecutive terms that must be added to the first six terms of the series in order to obtain a sum of 114,674. Right, so we have a sum SN, which is equal to 114. 674,000. We have a common ratio which is equal to 2. Our first term is equal to 14. And we can find the number of terms that will give us a sum of 114,674. So if we just go ahead and find the number of terms required to give us a sum of 114,674, and subtract 6 from that number of terms. We're going to have the number of consecutive terms that must be added to the first 6 terms of the series in order to obtain that sum. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We're going to have Sn being equals to A multiplied by R to the power N minus 1 divided by R minus 1. The sum is 114,674, A is equal to 14, R is equal to 2, and it's what we're interested in, minus 1 divided by 2 minus 1. If we cross multiply, this is 2 minus 1, right, which is just 1. We're going to have 114,674 being equal to 14 multiplied by 2 to the power n minus 1. So we are dividing both sides by 14. If we do that, we're going to have 8,191 being equal to 2 to the power n minus 1. If we take minus 1 to the left-hand side, we're going to have 2 to the power n being equal to 8,192. So we can take log on both sides. We're going to have n log of 2 being equals to log of 8192. So n is equals to the log of 8192 divided by log of 2. Right. If you put that in your calculator, you're going to get 13. In order to get a sum of 114,674, we need 13 terms. So how many consecutive terms must be added to the first six terms? That is 13 minus 6, which is equal to 7. So to the first six terms, we need to add 7 more terms in order to get a sum of 114,664. Let's move to the following question, 2.1.3. If the first term of another series, so we have A being equal to 448, and the sixth term, so we have a r to the power 5 being equals to 14. Calculate the sum to infinity of the new series. So we have a. Another point of information we need is r. Uh, if we substitute a into this equation, we're going to have 448 r to the power 5 being equals to 14. So r to the power 5 is equal to 14 divided by 448. So we can just take everything to the power 1 divided by 5. 
So 5 and 5 cancels out. We have R being equals to 1 divided by 2. So there we go. We have our um, common ratio. It is 1 divided by 2. So the sum to infinity will be equals to A divided by 1 minus R. A is 448 and then R is 1 divided by 2. This is equals to 896. And there we go. We have our sum to infinity. 2.2. Uh, Let's take a look at 2.2 and see what is happening there. So in 2.2, we're given some sigma notation and the sum, right? We're supposed to determine the value of k. Let's make sense of k. k plus 1 is the number of terms we have in our series. Meaning that if we can find the number of terms we have in our series, then k will just be the number of terms minus 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the terms of our uh, series. T1 will be equals to, so we substitute in P into this equation. T1 will be equals to 1 divided by 3. P is starting from 0 plus 1 divided by 6. This, this is just 1 divided by 6, right? And then T2 on the other end. 1 divided by 3 multiplied by 1 plus 1 divided by 6. This is 3 divided by 6. And then T3 will be equals to 1 divided by 3 multiplied by 2 plus 1 divided by 6. This is 5 divided by 6. T1, T2, T3. Let's see how our series looks like. So we have 1 divided by 6 plus 3 divided by 6 plus 5 divided by 6. Do we have a common ratio or do we have a common difference? We need to determine whether it is geometric or arithmetic. 5 divided by 6 minus 3 divided by 6 is 2 divided by 6. 3 divided by 6 minus 1 divided by 6 is 2 divided by 6. So we have a common difference. It means that it is arithmetic. The equation we can use to find the sum we see that Sn is equals to n divided by 2 multiplied by 2a plus n minus 1 multiplied by uh, the common difference. Uh, what is the sum? The sum is given by 21 divided by 6 being equals to n. n is what we're interested in. Multiply by 2a. a is the first term, which is 1 divided by 6 plus n minus 1 multiplied by the difference, which is 2 divided by 6. So 21 divided by 6 is the same as 20 multiplied by 6. Uh, that is 120. You plus 1, so this is 121 divided by 6. Then it goes to n divided by 2, and then 2 multiplied by 1 divided by 6 is 2 divided by 6 and then n multiplied by 2 divided by 6 is going to be 2n divided by 6 and then minus 2 divided by 6. As you can clearly see, 2 divided by 6 minus 2 divided by 6 uh, will give us 0. So we just have 121 divided by 6 being equals to n divided by 2 multiplied by 2n divided by 6. So 121 divided by 6 will be equals to 2n squared divided by 12. This is the same as 121 divided by 6 being equals to n squared divided by 6. So we can drop the 6s and just equate the numerators. Uh, n squared is equals to 121. So n should be equals to plus 11 and not minus 11. We cannot have minus 11 number of terms. So we have 11 terms, which means that k will be equal to 10.